Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about the Fairlight Control Surface. If you haven't checked this thing out, it is freaking amazing. And if you're watching this video, maybe you're like, wait, I got this surface, but I don't really know what to do with it. Well, here's a little intro slash tour of exactly what it does and some of the coolest little features that I've found with the Fairlight Desktop Control Surface. Shabo. Big thanks to Blackmagic Design for sponsoring this video. So here we have the desktop console. To start off, we're going to plug in the USB 3 and the power. And we can see the lights turn on. And before this thing will really turn on or come alive, we have to set a couple of settings inside of Resolve. So we're going to go up to DaVinci Resolve in the upper left hand corner and click on Preferences. And here under Control Panels, we have our audio console. Select this console for Fairlight and let's switch to Fairlight Desktop Console. And we'll go ahead and hit Save. And we'll have to restart Resolve for everything to update. And next time we open Resolve, it comes alive and scares you a little bit. It's also a good idea to open up the DaVinci Control Panel setup and make sure your console is recognized and this is where you update firmware. And if you're connecting through a network, you can set your IP address and things like that. Definitely good to know about, especially if you might be having problems, but let's jump into Resolve. So the great big obvious feature here are these faders and they're motorized. And you can see if we switch to a different timeline, they jump around and it's neat. This lets you control the overall volume of any track or bus. And you can see some track information here in the upper part of the LCD screens. Moving one of these up and down is exactly like moving your faders in the mixer here on the interface. In fact, you can move it on the interface and it moves in real life because we live in the future. I know this has been around for a while, but I'm still, I still like it. <laughs> Above each of our faders, we have our mute and solo as well as a way to select the track and toggle that off and on. And the knobs default to controlling the pan of each track. And everything here is touch sensitive. So you can actually hit control and touch a knob or a fader to reset it. Check this out. Do, 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 do. Over here to the right of our faders, we have our transport controls so we can play, stop, forward, backward, and our jog wheel. And there are a lot of controls on this board, but these are the main tools to kind of get around the timeline and make some of your major adjustments. And even though that seems kind of simple, Everything that we touched other than the faders can actually be modified with these different keys down here to do all kinds of things. All of these other sections up here, the channel monitoring, automation, control, and user buttons are all ways to get into different modes of using the console. For instance, if I were to hit EQ, all of these knobs turn into EQ controls and will let me adjust things in the EQ for the last track I have selected. In this case, it also opens up the EQ panel in your main interface, but you can also hook up an external HDMI monitor to display a whole bunch of information about whatever mode you're in. Another quick thing that I really like is if you have a track selected and you move around with the jog wheel, the timeline automatically switches to select whatever clip is under your playhead on that track. This is a really quick way to work on specific clips without having to go to the mouse and select them. And you can actually do some basic kind of audio editing here, but this is really designed for mixing. A little more on selecting tracks. You can select any track you want just by hitting the selection button. You can select multiple tracks. If you want to deselect everything except for one, just double tap it. And you can select a range by holding one and then double tapping another one. Again, these buttons kind of change the modes. So if I'm into EQ mode, these selection buttons aren't actually track select anymore. Those are the enable controls for each band of the EQ. And so if I quickly want to go and just select a different track and EQ that, if I hold my enable key, I can select the track that I want to EQ. And now I'm in the EQ controls for track three. Now for these LCD screens, up here in our normal mode, we can see which track is selected by whichever one is red. But if we go into a different mode like EQ, we still have these headers. Those stay the same, but everything down below switches into whatever mode you're in. And you can also see whatever track you're working on here in this first LCD screen. And you can always see which track is selected red here in the headers. But you may notice we only have 12 faders here. And what if we have more than 12 tracks? 
I can switch in between my banks of tracks by hitting this channel bank button and go back and forth. So I have 16 tracks, and so the first four here are 13 through 16. All of these control buttons will switch the different mode for all of our controls here, as well as what happens in the LCD screens and what all of these knobs do. So we have the master, which is your mains and your buses. Channel gives you a little overview of a bunch of controls for whatever channel is selected. We also have pan settings, plugins, EQ, expander, compressor, limiter, and our recording inputs, and our sends. Right here we have the automation buttons. This gets pretty complicated pretty quick, so I would definitely make sure that you check out the manual, but this is where that happens. This knob right here is your monitoring volume, and all these buttons down here are for more kind of advanced monitoring functions other than obviously mute and dim, which just makes things quieter. These four buttons you'd probably only care about if you are running a recording studio, so. And there are a few other controls, but really uh, taking a look at the manual is a great idea. We also have the user buttons right here, which you can customize to do just a ton of different stuff. Again, take a look at the manual. Last but not least, we have our arrow buttons here, and these work just like the arrow buttons on your keyboard. Left and right moves one frame left or right. Up and down goes to the next edit point. And then we also have our modifier buttons down here which again, very similar to the keyboard, but if you hold one of these and hit another button, it's gonna do something different. And these are really useful. For instance, if you hold down shift and reach for a pan knob, it moves a lot slower than it normally would. So you can get kind of that fine control. And something like that kind of happens with a lot of the different controls on the board. So let's look at a practical overview. I have a sequence here that I want to start mixing. I have three tracks. The first one is dialogue. The second one is kind of nat sound. And the third track is music. Very first thing that's obvious is the music is way too loud. So I'm gonna push this audio way down and then let's go ahead and start this. And we'll bring in the music. Hi, my name is G. I'm production and shipping for Fang's Film Gear. I do it from start to finish. I order the fabric, cut the fabric, sew it all and ship it all. And it That's a decent level to start out with, but we really need some kind of dynamics on our first track to make sure that the loud parts aren't too loud and the quiet parts aren't too quiet and kind of level out our dialogue a little bit. So I'm gonna select the first track and go into compressor mode and that should bring up our dynamics panel. I can turn on the compressor with select and I can adjust my threshold and ratio here as well as the makeup gain on the track two knob. So let's go ahead and play this. Everything I use in the process is from the US. And we'll adjust the threshold the down just to where that my life, and this is a real gain starts coming in. Things that are useful. Push up it the ratio a little bit and push up our gain. Processes before we finally got the bags that we liked. Good batteries in the green side and the used batteries in the red side. So you Great. So now we can go out of our compressor and activate our limiter. And we'll switch the threshold to just something like negative two, negative three, somewhere in there. That's where I like it. And let's play this back. You always know you have fresh batteries. And now that our dialogue is a little bit louder, I can push the music up a bit. A little bit of time, but I enjoy doing it. And I make a good product. It's well made and it's not gonna fall apart. I stand by it. I'm excited when people buy. Maybe we even wanna do a little EQ scoop on our music. So I'm gonna select track three with our music and go to EQ and I'll adjust my high mid frequency to be eh, somewhere between one and 2K. And we'll just take the gain down a little bit and make the Q a little bit less like that. Let's play this back. My bags because I ship them all over the world and it's really fun to have people make videos using my bags from students to hobby videographers to... A subtle adjustment that just makes that voice cut through a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and zoom into the end of our music track here. I'm just gonna hold down the zoom key and roll with my jog wheel. I can hold down control and zoom it up like this. And this does fade out, but it doesn't quite fade all the way out. We wanna make sure that the sound is completely done at the end of the clip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select the third track and because my playhead's over this last clip, it's gonna automatically select that. This is where we get into some of the more advanced features of this panel. We have a lot more features that we can dive into in the user panel. 
I can bring up my user menu by holding zoom and hitting one. This brings up the edit panel user keys. If I hold down alt, that will bring up the edit menus here. Each one of these corresponds to the user keys. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can select kind of what I want to adjust and I want the level controls. So I'll hit three and that'll bring up all of these options. So what this is doing is remapping all of these buttons here to have a certain control in this mode. So if I were to hit number four, that would fade the tail of this clip to the playhead. And I can choose to have this menu up or not, but right now I can just hit four and that will fade this to my playhead. And no matter where my playhead is, I can go back here and hit four and that will fade out right there. And some of these actually toggle. If I hit one, it lights up here. And now my wheel will adjust the level of the clip. Really nice. And you don't have to have this menu open for the keys to function. I can hit zoom one again and get rid of it. And these will still work in the same way. I just have to be kind of conscious about what menu I was in. There are a ton of features in the user keys and the menus and everything. And I definitely recommend reading the manual because man, you can get really deep really fast. The other cool thing is that if you have a plugin on a track, you can actually access the controls to the plugin by holding plug and hitting whatever number plugin you have in the channel strip. And then your controls show up right here. So there's a little intro of the control surface and man, this thing is really deep. Like every single control can be changed and can be modified and there's all kinds of shortcuts and everything like that. So definitely recommend digging into the manual. But if you want to be more tactile with your audio in the Fairlight page, man, I cannot recommend this thing enough. If you do, I would say more than a couple jobs a month doing mixing. Cannot beat it, man. So cool. So I hope that's helpful for any of you audio nerds out there. If you do want to learn kind of the basics of Fairlight, I have a video right here that goes over it. And it's kind of like the first part of this, and this is kind of the second part of that, you know? That's how it works. That's how parts work. That's how parts work.